Welcome back to the second part of this lecture. To get an insight into the mechanisms, let's analyze these findings and characterizing parameters in more detail. There are two important conclusions based on these considerations. First, it shows that a tire is a dynamic system due to its elasticity which means that a tire has a certain eigenfrequency as well as a transfer behavior. Second, for those who are familiar with general system dynamics, as the equation shows, tire forces act like a first-order time delay, a so-called BT1 element. Well, what do these conclusions mean? First of all, they mean that the description of force transmission by steady-state characteristics is a simplification, because in reality there will be a certain time delay between the actual force that are acting and the input to the system or excitation. To make it clearer, let's make an example. Let's consider a steering maneuver. By steering the wheel, we increase the slip angle in point W from zero to a certain value, for example to two degrees, and then hold it constant. Due to the elasticity of the tire, the tire force will not immediately get to the value described by the steady state characteristics. It will take some time for the tire to build up the force. This is meant by the expression time delay. This behavior with respect to the time is illustrated in the figure on the bottom right side here. A very fast change of the slip angle is considered a so-called step input. By that, the so-called step response of the system, in our case the tire forces, can be investigated. As you can see here, it jumps very fast to a certain value. In contrast, the actual force, described by the dynamic tire force in blue, needs some time to build up and reach the steady state value. This time delay is characterized by this time constant tau. Based on our assumptions, the differential equation that describes the force dynamics is linear. Therefore, we can derive an analytical solution, which is shown here on the left side. As described by this solution and indicated in the figure on the right, when time t is equal to tau, the value of the dynamic force amounts approximately 63% of the final steady state value. For t is equal to 3 times tau, the dynamic force would already amount approximately 95% of the steady state value. According to this model, the dynamic force approaches the steady state value asymptotically. These are the characteristics of systems that behave like a PT1 element. In conclusion, this parameter time constant describes how fast the tire reacts. As we already know, the time constant is a function of the relaxation length, which means that the relaxation length describes the distance a tire has to travel until approximately 36% of the steady state force value is reached. These considerations also hold for a decrease of the slip angle and the force, which is called relaxation behavior. To conclude, the dynamic or transient behavior of tire forces can simplified be described by two parameters. These two parameters, the time constant and the relaxation length, characterize the dynamic force response due to slip changes. The relaxation length contains the physical properties of a tire that have the most significant influence on transient force transmission. This is the steady state force characteristic described by the cornering stiffness, as well as the mechanical stiffness described by the lateral spring stiffness. To get a feeling for typical values of these parameters, we've prepared a simple example for you. Let's consider a typical passenger car tire at a constant vertical load and with a given cornering stiffness that is traveling with 60 km per hour. As we already know, a typical value for the vertical stiffness of such a tire is 250 kN per meter. We can roughly assume that the lateral stiffness CY is approximately the half of the vertical stiffness CZ. 
Now try to determine the lateral relaxation length of that tire, sigma alpha, as well as the time constant, tau y, at the given traveling velocity. More generally, a relaxation length can be determined for the longitudinal and lateral tire force transmission, often named sigma kappa and sigma alpha respectively. However, in contrast to our simple previous considerations, this parameter is not constant in real driving. Constant relaxation lengths are only a result of the assumptions that we made at the beginning. In particular, we assumed small slip angles, linear tire behavior and constant properties, such as cornering stiffness and mechanical stiffness. However, for example, a change in vertical load will lead to a different lateral stiffness of the tire structure, as well as of the cornering stiffness. Furthermore, as we've already seen in previous lectures, tire force characteristics are also nonlinear functions of the slip. You can see a detailed description of transient tire force transmission becomes a quite challenging task. Simplified, the relaxation length can be written as a function of at least the vertical load Fz and the respective slick sigma x or sigma y. The figure here on the left side shows lateral relaxation length characteristics of a typical passenger car tire at different vertical loads with respect to the lateral slip. As you can see here, typical values of the relaxation lengths are approximately between 0.1 and 0.8 meters. For example, the correct result for the lateral relaxation length of the simple example on the previous slide is approximately 0.45 meters. Furthermore, it can be seen that the relaxation length decreases with increasing slip and tends to a certain value at high slip values. This is a result of the nonlinear behavior of tire force characteristics with increasing slip. Consequently, the time constant is also changing depending on the relaxation length. Therefore, the term time constant is not really appropriate here anymore. This parameter is actually only constant in a certain operating point. Well, let's leave the theory and look at two practical examples in the last part of this lecture and also briefly talk about the influence of transient force effects on vehicle handling dynamics. At the very beginning of this lecture, we saw an example of measured tire force behavior on a tire test rig. Here you can see a comparison between such measured tire forces and simulation results. The simulation is based on a fully nonlinear modeling approach. This means that nonlinear steady state force characteristics, as well as the dependency of relaxation length on vertical load and slip, are considered. Additionally, viscoelastic deformation behavior of the tire structure is considered. Therefore, the simulation is based on the application of all of our considerations that we made so far in this lecture. The figure on the left side shows the measured lateral force response at a certain vertical load when the slip angle is changed harmonically with a certain amplitude and frequency with respect to the time. The measurement is shown by the gray line. The dashed red line represents the computed dynamic tire force FYD and the dotted blue line the computed steady state force FYS. As we can see, there is a small time delay between steady state force and dynamic tire force. Although this time delay is quite small in this case, we can see that the computed dynamic force describes the measured tire force more accurately. When we look at the force response with respect to the lateral slip, here on the right side, the deviation is much higher. Again, we can see this characteristic hysteresis behavior of the measured lateral tire force that we already saw at the beginning of the lecture. In comparison, the steady-state tire force is shown in blue. As we can clearly see, under such operating conditions, the description of tire force transmission by steady-state characteristics fails. Now the important questions that remain are, what is the practical relevance of these findings and why is it important to deal with transient tire force transmission? 
When dealing with vehicle handling dynamics analysis, a typical driving maneuver with higher excitation frequencies is for example a lane change maneuver. This might be necessary to perform to avoid a collision with a certain obstacle that occurs on the road ahead. In this simulation here, we can see a certain vehicle performing a double lane change maneuver. Additionally, there is a second vehicle called ghost vehicle performing the same maneuver. This transparent vehicle is a duplicate. The only difference between those two vehicles is a difference in the inflation pressure of the tires. In this case, the ghost vehicle performs the same maneuver with reduced inflation pressure. As we can see, during the first lane change to the left, there is only a small difference in the behavior of these two vehicles visible. However, the difference is increasing and even culminates in instability of the ghost vehicle during the second lane change. To keep things simple here, let's focus on the first lane change to the left. The figure here on the right side shows the lateral tire force response of the right front wheel of both vehicles during the steering maneuver to the left. In this case, the depicted force response is not only influenced by steering. A distinct wheel load transfer has to be considered too. However, as we can see, a certain time delay of the lateral tire force in the case of reduced inflation pressure occurs. Now, by applying the theoretical knowledge that we've gained in this course so far, we can find a plausible explanation for this behavior. From previous lectures, we already know that the mechanical stiffness of a tire depends significantly on the inflation pressure, which means that a reduction of the inflation pressure leads to a reduced lateral tire stiffness. A decrease of tire stiffness leads to an increase of the relaxation length and consequently to an increase of the time constant. Therefore, tire forces show a slower dynamic behavior. Horizontal tire forces need more time to build up. This is a simple and physically plausible explanation for this behavior here. However, it has to be noted that the influence of inflation pressure is more complex. For example, it also affects the contact patch size and the steady state force characteristics, among else. That's it for now. As we've seen, the description of transient tire force transmission is a more sophisticated task. It is an advanced topic in tire modeling. However, with the considerations that we made in this lecture, we were able to find a simple physical and plausible description of dynamic or transient tire force transmission. Additionally, we got a basic insight into the main influencing tire properties and their influence on vehicle handling dynamics.